Hi, welcome back. This is Phil Biadrone. I'm here with Dan Watsonabe. When we previously talked, you mentioned the skills that you had that got you into the door of development. Now, if I'd like to continue, how did your career take off from there? Well, what actually happened after that is that we had the Writers Guild strike in 1988. And all of a sudden, all of the career path stuff that I was doing, the, the advancements I was making stopped. And, um, and, and I ended up having to go back and be a word processor at a, at a real estate firm. And uh, I kept on reading scripts on the side. And I knew that sooner or later one of those companies would pull me in. And here's one of the lessons about show business is that it takes too long and then it happens too fast. And, yeah. and, and what ended up happening is I ended up getting three full-time job offers in the same month. And I'm like, where were you guys last year? And I, I took the one with Scotty Brothers, primarily because it was Tony Scotty who had been in Valley of the Dolls. And, and it had been the company I'd worked with the longest. And uh, This is the company that would? Become Fremantle. It, it, it would become Fremantle Media. And they hired me as uh, what at that time was called a story editor. And uh, now that job is called manager of development. And uh, what a, a story editor does is it's a very entry-level development position where you're looking at projects that are coming in that are from baby writers or, or, or new, new writers. And a, ba a baby writer is the same as? As a new writer. It's, okay. it's someone who doesn't really have a lot of produced credits or baby producers, some people who don't have uh, an, an, an armload of credits. And what uh, Scotty Brothers Pictures wanted me to do was to come in and, um, and, and oversee the production of two original movies every year and the acquisition of movies that were already in production and we would just finalize it and do the distribution of an additional three. And the first movie that I worked on was a picture called The Resurrected. And it was Dan O'Bannon's movie, Dan O'Bannon who wrote Alien and yeah. Total Recall. And, and he directed this. And, and, and I was thrown in as, as post-production supervisor. I was my first day on the job. They said, Dan, you're going to look at a rough cut of this, and you're going to give us notes. And I'm like, uh, Is this I've something you felt this. you were qualified for? Absolutely not. But what's nice about working for a small company is, A, they're not going to pay you enough to fire you. <laughs> B, you go in with a disclosure that you don't know what you're doing. And C, they're saying, we will, we will show you how to do this. And they did. So uh, I got that experience of being able to work with someone that I had always admired, uh, working on a film that was very problematic. And, and, and so I got the best of both worlds, knowing that I, I, I was being given license to fail. And it was OK. And so you know, when you have that kind of a cushion under you, you're not going to fail. These scenarios still exist today. Absolutely. OK. Absolutely. When you go in on, on a lower level job, you are not expected to make all the right decisions. You are expected to learn what not to do next time. And as long as you cop to it, as long as you are honest about where you messed up, um, most of the time people are like, well, you know what, we had your back, we knew that was going to happen, but hey, now you know. Um, what was interesting after that was that the company had an opportunity at that moment uh, to change gears. Uh, they, they had just gotten an infusion of cash from a uh, Japanese investor. And yes, part of the reason I was hired was because of my last name. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to deny that. But, uh, Good I didn't but, have to ask. Huh? Good I didn't have to ask. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> you, know, you know what? The best thing in, in, in the world is to be honest about why things happen. And, uh, and they came in with $20 million. And I was going to beef up the record side of the company and help fund the films. But they had this opportunity to take a TV show that had been on network and had a lot of foreign interest, but that no one in the US was interested in moving forward on. And Tony Scotty and my other mentors, who's a gentleman by the name of Sid Vintage, uh, said, this is an opportunity for us. There, there's a new market in what was then called first run syndication, which was taking a, a TV show out like you would take a talk show and, and sell it in individual markets. And they said, we know this will work because we can get the money out of Europe, but we don't have the cash unless we spend everything to make this happen. It's quite a risk. Huge. To the point where the executives and the companies literally were refinancing their houses to make payroll. Wow. Show was Baywatch. And cool. that took the company from being one where $20 million was all the money in the world 
to where less than seven years later, they sold the company for $550 million on the basis of one show that wasn't even necessarily that tremendous a hit. It was a big hit, but it wasn't that big a hit. So you can see what one program can do. Now, Tony gave me the opportunity of, of because I know you're stronger with feature films and you don't really seem to like TV. And I was like, I'm, of course, being a capitalist going, I need the money. I like money. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm willing to do anything. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what Tony liked was the fact when he asked me about Baywatch, he goes, well, it's Baywatch. And, you know, is this the kind of show you want to work on? I said, absolutely. I said, my friends and I used to watch the show all the time. Now, uh, yeah, we were watching because we couldn't believe that this kind of gidget show was still on the air at, 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 in, in the 90s. And, but the bottom line was we watched it. And Tony goes, I like this kid. <laughs> so, so we ended up doing it. And that, that was my calling card in that company through three name changes and, and, and 16 years. Great. Thank you very much, Dan.